In this video, I'm going to go over how to use the high glass visualization to compare data in the 4DN data portal. So we start out at data.4dnucleum.org, and then we can go to the tools menu and click on 4DN visualization workspace. Um, so to start with, we can pick an organism, so I'll pick human. Um, so now we start with an empty high glass display. Um, so if we're not logged in, we can still add data and look at things, but we won't be able to save anything. Um, so I'm just going to log in quickly. And if you're not a 4DN member, then you can still register an account. Um, so I'm first going to clone the display so that I have my own copy. And then I can name it if I'd like. Um, but now I'm going to click on the Add Data button, um, and there will be a pop-up window that, is, that allows us to use the search and filtering capabilities. Um, so to start with, um, I'll look for micro-C experiments. So we have some high-resolution contact maps. Um, in biosources, I'll click on the Tier 1 H1 and HFF cells. So the tier one cell lines are the lines used by 4DN labs from controlled batches um, that have higher reproducibility. Um, and then I'll also first look for the M cools, um, which are the contact matrices. So I'll click on this HFF and H1, um, and then I'll add the bed files, um, which um, include uh, boundaries. So the HFF and H1, um, I can click on Apply. So now the contact matrices are next to each other, um, and above each contact matrices are both 1D tracks. Um, if you haven't used high glass before, you can use the middle mouse button to zoom in or out. Um, and as you do that, uh, the resolution will change, and you can click the mouse and drag around to look at different parts of the contact matrix. Um, and perhaps for the 1D tracks, we only want to compare HFF to HFF. So I can mouse over the H1 1D track and remove it from the left-hand side. Um, and the same on the right for H1, H1. So I'll click on I'll mouse over the HFF 1D track and remove that from the right-hand side. So now at this point, maybe we want to look at different types of experiments uh, besides just micro-C. Um, so we can add more data if we'd like. Um, so right now I'm going to click on ATAC-Seq um, to look at chromatin accessibility. And I'll use the same biosources as before. Um, so now we have six files, so we can scroll over and look at what these files are. So we have signal fold change, conservative peaks, and peaks. Um, so I'm going to look at signal fold change. So click on the HFF and the H1. And then I'll do what I did before. So I'll remove the H1 track from the left, and I'll remove the HFF track from the right. Um, and so now I'll just zoom in a little bit more. So we get this area with some really nice associating domains. Um, and we can see that in the HFF, these um, associating domains correlate with um, lower chromatin accessibility. Um, whereas in the H1 stem cells, we have a different kind of pattern and don't see that decrease in chromatin accessibility. So now I can save this display. Um, if I want, I can change the permissions. So I can share it with other people in my lab or other 4DN members if I'm a 4DN member, or I can make it uh, publicly shareable. I'll just reload it to make sure it's released and publicly available. 
Um, and then if I want, I can copy this link um, and share it to others. Uh, so thanks for listening. And as always, always feel free to email us at support.4dnucleum.org.